I would say predominant language of God is language of imagination and language of images. Language of images. When we realize this, then we realize that we hear God much more clear than we thought. We just have to tune in into His frequency. Like for example, for example, there is music in your room right now. How many of you can hear it? Drop it in the chat. How many of you can hear music in your room right now? It's a tricky question, just kind of telling you right ahead of the time. <laughs> all right, all right. Some people, um, Zoom is coming in faster. I can pretend to hear it. It's in my head. I hear silence. I don't hear anything. Yes, I can. Yes, I hear music. Um, uh, I hear music a lot. I mean, me, me. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Um, Ilya on, 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 on. YouTube, not hearing music, not hearing music, okay. All right, it was a tricky question. So <laughs> those of you hearing music, maybe it's because it's playing in the background. But most of you should not be hearing any music right now, okay, with your physical ears. You know why? Because your body is not built like a radio. You don't have a radio transmitter inside of you. Okay, and you can't pick up radio waves. But if you have a radio in your room and you tune to a certain frequency, then you can catch the right station and you can hear music in your living room, in your room, in your car right now. Okay, do you do you do you see what I, do you see what I'm doing there? Okay, so there is music in your room in the form of radio frequencies. But you can't hear it. Why? Well, because your body is not built to hear radio frequency. What? Okay. At least for now that we have discovered, we have not discovered that ability as human beings. Okay. God has created us in very fascinating ways. So who knows? Maybe sometime in the future we'll discover that we even have ability to do that. But for now, if you're a normal human being, you can't read radio wa waves. Okay. Uh, your eardrums are not able to perceive that or anything in our body we're not able to perceive radio waves but they are there the music is there the news station is there everything is there all you gotta do is to find the right apparatus or what i how do i say right equipment tune to the right frequency and you get to hear that music so God is speaking right now because Bible says my, my voice, hear my voice right now. God is speaking in the present time. But it's a matter of you tuning in into the frequency that God speaks. Tuning into the language of God, understanding how God speaks. And perceive it by faith. And you will be able to hear God. So it's a matter of training our soul, our mind, to be able to hear from God. Remember, you are built, you are made out of three parts. And those of you that have been with me uh, through previous lessons or things, it's a repeat for you, but it's a good repeat. But those of you that are new or rewatching, you are made out of body, soul, and spirit. You are a spirit, you're not your body who possesses a soul that lives in the body. Now, when you will die and in your funeral, they won't say uh, so-and-so is laying in the coffin. They will say the body of so-and-so is laying in the coffin, that the you, the actual you is gone. It's done. It's either there or there. I'm, I believe that because you're here, you're going to be there. But real you is spirit. And in your spirit, God has given you spirit because... Only spirit to spirit can communicate. So God has given you spirit so that he can communicate with you. So in your spirit, you can hear God perfectly. The problem comes in our other two elements, our body 
and our soul, mainly our soul. Um, our soul was given to us to relate to one another, emotions and feelings and all that stuff to express ourselves to one another. And our body was given to us to interact with the physical world and to house our soul and our spirit. So if we want to hear God, we hear him in a spirit. Now we have to align our soul and teach our soul to perceive from our spirit because our soul, the reason why we have soul, our soul is the bridge between the physical and the spiritual. Write this down. Our soul is the bridge between the physical and the spiritual, <laughs> between our body and our spirit. And so we can train our soul. We can learn to tune in our soul to be able to perceive of what God is speaking to us in the spirit. Now remember, God is speaking to you, but he is spirit. He's talking to you in your spirit. Now we just got to funnel that from our spirit through our soul into our physical mind. Does that make sense? Our soul is bridge between our body and our spirit. Our soul is a bridge between spiritual and physical. Okay. The gift of prophecy is the equipment we need to tune in into the spiritual realm that exists all around us the gift of, the gifts of the holy spirit is that equipment that we need to hear from god there is a word to keep us deaf the parable of sower explaining that often we, uh, explains that often when god tries to speak to us the enemy comes along and tries to convince us that we didn't hear from god clearly or that it wasn't his voice Mark chapter, four, uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 14 through 15. The sower sowed the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the, words, uh, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. So, we have to understand that even when we begin to tune in and learning to hear God, there is going to be, there is going to, there's always going to be a fight. Not only your carnal mind, so you're gonna have two enemies. Write this down. You're gonna have two enemies that will fight. And this is new material. I don't even have it in my notes. Okay, two enemies that will fight you. To convince you that you didn't hear from God or to put a doubt in the word that you received from God. Enemy number one from the scripture that we just read is Satan, is demons. They will try to convince you that either uh, it wasn't God who's speaking or it was you who made it all up. Okay. Now, it's the oldest trick in the book of Satan. Let's go all the way to Genesis. All right. God put Adam and Eve into the garden, into a perfect environment. Satan comes in and he begins to question what God said. Did you hear what I said? Adam and Eve, they were perfect in a perfect environment. And God spoke to them, and they know that God spoke to them because they spoke to God every evening. And the first trick of Satan of in, of for humanity, which he still uses today, is to convince them, or let's put it this way, to put a doubt in a place where God spoke. Hmm, that's so good. Did God really say that? Did God really mean that? 
But maybe perhaps God is holding out on you. Maybe perhaps God doesn't want you to have good time. Maybe perhaps God is not that interested in you. Maybe he doesn't love you, this or that. He's trying to question. Satan is trying to put a question with God has put an exclamation mark. That's his first tactic. Okay. Second enemy that you're going to have is your carnal mind. Write this down. Carnal mind. This is the reason why Apostle Paul says that we must renew our mind according to the scriptures. And as we renew our mind, our life will be changed. Your life is changed not just by the reading of scripture, but it is reforming restructuring and getting familiar with god's voice because really your life changes not by logos not by scripture not by written word of god but your life is changed by the spoken word of god by rhema but when you read logos when you read scripture your mind is renewed and you're getting familiar how god speaks so that in the moment when he gives you rhema, when the spoken word is released into your life by the Spirit of God, you have more confidence to know that it was God who spoke and that what brings change into your life. Are you with me? So there's constant war going on in the spirit and in your soul to keep you deaf, to keep you not hearing from God because the moment you begin to hear from God and you begin to obey your life begins to change Jesus said the person that has built his house on the rock is not the one that just heard it right but the one that applied it but how can you apply the word of God how can you follow through in the word of God when you don't know or when you question that it is him who's speaking to you so that's why many of us Many of our lives are destroyed, are in shambles. We can't seem to put things together because we can't hear God's instruction on how to build our life. 